to do with the double third etudes. And of course, everybody wants to know about double thirds. I'm going to answer first the questions of the person who sent it. And what I don't cover today, I will cover next time because it's one of the this and some other, as I said, appetizing topics that people are dying to know about and how to handle them. But I, I may still get to it. The first question is um, fingering. And the person asked about finding and sticking to the right fingering. You know, in other lexicon of right fingering, it's fingering that feels comfortable, fingering that feels at ease, fingering that the hand doesn't forget. When the fingering is good, the hand doesn't forget it. Um, so, but of course, fingering is not the full answer. It's how do we move? We can have fingering that looks good, but we're stretching or we're twisting and we're isolating or we're curling. All the main causes for fatigue and tension and often pain, they are very definite causes for what happens. It doesn't happen out of the blue. It's something that we do that causes these things. So you all have the music in front of you, I hope. What they suggest is four, one, four, two, five. And my answer is if somebody feels comfortable with that, do it. I prefer one, three, what you saw, I wrote there, one, three, two, five. I prefer this fingering. It just, it feels, it's, it's at the comfortable position. I don't feel the arm has to go this way. It's right at my side. So, you have a choice here. You know, choose the finger if it is comfortable. In my case, I have students who prefer one, three, two, four. They prefer, it's all fingerings that are good for you. They don't cause any trouble. And it's a question, what are you most at ease in this case? So you see what I chose. In measure three, they give you in the addition one, four, two, five, one, four, two, three, which is a decent fingering. In my hand, the two, three feels a little bit stretched, so I don't like it as much. I choose what I showed you, this fingering. Now, most people without the knowledge of rotation and how we cross to double third may not like it. So I would say these are, again, two choices. I think both of them are good. And I added a little bit of shaping here, which is the same shape here for both fingering actually works the same. A tiny under between the first two thirds and then over to here. So this is the other choice um, of fingering here. I usually don't have so many choices because there's usually one set that feels truly good and truly comfortable, but uh, sometimes there the, the are, you know, more than one that they feel comfortable. The one uh, I wanted to show, even though the person, you know something before I go on, I actually would, should answer the questions of the person. Um, stretching before playing with a question mark. So if you know something about this work, you know that stretching, again, is one of the main causes for, uh, for injuries. And the whole idea of having to stretch to work out in order to be able to play doesn't really apply to, to any instrument, I would say, that I can think of. Uh, when we talk about the whole body, you have big parts, you have big muscles, you know, so stretching for athletes or for dancers, uh, for workouts, whatever, it might be a good thing. But when it comes to the piano, it's not, we're not athletes. I mean, we've been called athletes at the piano but we really don't do athletics. This is why very young children without all the development in athletics can play very difficult pieces, very gifted uh, children. So the, the, the issue here is that we deal with very small muscles and very, very small movements and very little effort. It seems like it takes a lot of effort to play the instrument, but it doesn't when it's done correctly. And that's true of anything that we do. When it's comfortable, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of effort but here there's truly very little effort. So I don't recommend stretching before because you're going to all, they're going to extreme range of motion, it's pulling, it's creating antagonistic pulls, it creates a lot of problems and then you go to the piano to play. Um, and then there's also uh, 
avoiding the right side hand wrist pain on the pinky side. And that kind of pain, I don't know if the person is talking about the right or the left, comes from twisting. When you do that and you do it enough, you know, you're going to, and sometimes not even enough for me just to show it, I can already feel, you know, already there's a, a twinge there. So that comes from twisting. And like I said, there's a way to avoid it, but you need to know uh, what to do uh, to avoid it. It also sometimes causes what they call ganglia, what the way ganglia expresses itself is in a swelling that sometimes it's a, it's a very hard one and it seems they, they try to operate on it, but you don't need to operate on it if you don't twist. It will go away, it will slowly subside. Uh, there could be, again, a stretching to the pinky instead of going, you know, in a coordinate, in an aligned way. Those, those could be uh, the reasons. I would just, I have just a, a couple of minutes uh, more and uh, I wanted to say that one of the one of the issues with uh, double notes uh, and double thirds that uh, seems to be uh, such such a mystery to people is when we do a trill, you know, we have a very aligned left-right motions synchronized, you know, to move. But when we have double notes, if we did that, we off balance on the second one. It very often goes like that, and then... So the way it gets, it's counterintuitive. It's very interesting that what ends up feeling so natural, or what feels natural, is when it's analyzed, it doesn't seem like the thing you would think about. Uh, and what happens here is that the rotation, it's a double rotation. It's rotating to the one three, and it's both of them go... of them go to the left. It becomes a very tiny left. You don't even see. It. That's the secret of uh, double rotation. How can it be so big? And we play fast. We can't play fast when it's big. And Bob uh, will discuss it today. Um, it's really a process. And when you put it in, it just goes in and you don't see it. That's why prodigies don't know that that's what they do until something happens and they can't do it something something changes so in the double thirds it's all it's all left 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 there's tiny ins and out here the 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 third it doesn't have the thumb goes a tiny bit out so i would say this is the start of my discussion about the double thirds i have to pass on the baton now to Mary Moran, and I'll see you at the end with some announcements. Thank you very much.